Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from PersusGrowRoom.com. In this week's episode, we're talking all about books to help you learn how to grow cannabis. This is books from people like Ed Rosenthal, Jorge Cervantes, Jeff Lowenthal, uh, Lizzie Post, even Jack Herra as well. We've mentioned his book in this episode. So if you're looking to go out and buy some cannabis books, then here are some ideas for you. These are books that I own and the different panel members own and books that we would recommend that you go out and buy as well. So enjoy. We have a lot of good listener mail questions at the end as well. So stay tuned for those. But for now, let's just get stuck in and get involved in this episode. I'll speak to you at the end of this. See you in a bit. As the kids would say, vibing to the Grow Guides tune there. Hope everybody likes the Grow Guides tune. It's a nice, vibing. cool tune. Vibing. This is one of the new words that the kids are using, bro. Get with the lingo, fam. It's not very original. No, okay. What is nowadays, bro? It's 2022. That's everything's recycled. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. God damn. I like being from where I'm from because that shit was original. And I'm saying, good I times, know. man. The 90s were the best, weren't they? 90s were full of books, too, because there was very limited internet, if you remember. Indeed. That is correct, yes. <laughs> That's right. So these books you, you speak of, what is yeah. a book, TG? Well, a book... Is what uh, me and my friend Greg used to refer to marijuana as when we would text each other. And we'd be like, hey, I went to the library. I got some new books, man. You want to come read them? And <laughs> well, we used like, to call it food. We used to be like, yo, man, I'm hungry. You got any food? You know? <laughs> yeah. And I'll get an example here. Here's a, here's a good, this is the first grow book I ever bought, actually. And a uh, closet cultivator by Ed Rosenthal. Sweet. A cover, a whole bunch of thinner pages with words on them with an end thicker cover uh and there's information inside usually wow. in a they're rare nowadays these book things aren't they yeah usually on like an ipad and mm. sometimes i've actually gone like this on a book and been like fuck and it like, seems like this is the way things are starting to head now rather than having these no. actual copies i spoke to jorge cervantes this week and he's releasing his book very soon and he's not releasing it in paper form like he has all of his previous books. He's releasing it online as an ebook. Really? Yeah, yeah. Only ebook? Mm hmm. Oh. It's much cheaper and people prefer oh, yeah. it that way, apparently. Oh, fuck. It's so much cheaper, but yeah. damn. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because having that physical copy of the book is. But I've got some epic weed books, man. I've got signed books from Ed Rosenthal and shit, but I don't read them. If I want to find information, I'll go online and I'll find it. That's, that's the way there it's There you go, right? Yeah. It isn't like the 90s anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was listening to some good podcasts last night about uh, some with some breeders that were around back then and they were telling their stories of when they started growing. And yeah, it was like books, three books, three or five books that were available back then because there was no forum, there was no internet, there was mm -hmm. no like podcasts like this. That's right, you know? passed by word of mouth. And the first yeah. time I ever saw like a weed growing book I was living with a friend of mine, a young man, like 18, he was very young. And he just had this little paper pamphlet. It, it was like 20 pages long or something. It wasn't even big, man. It, it wasn't professionally made or anything like that. It's like somebody had put this shit together to just send out as many as possible to teach people how to grow weed and showed you how to make a grow room. And, you know, it was just packed full of as much information as you could into a small book like that. It, and that was the first time I ever seen any kind of weed growing literature such a long time ago. But that was fucking awesome, man. That, it's like inspired me that, that did. That, that was the days before everybody had the internet, you know, it's different times, man. Oh, yeah. So, well, what about you, Marge? You, you got some weed books. What was the first book you ever owned, if you do own any? Oh, I have tons of weed books. I mean, a lot of them are actually weed cookbooks. I have a, quite a number of those. Cool. Sure. I do also have Ed Rosenthal's Cannabis Grower's Handbook, which is a handy reference guide. Mm -hmm. nice. The first weed book, though, is like some kind of, I wish I could re remember the exact name of it. I think my parents took it from me. It's like <gasps> something about hash. I forget what it was. Some book about hashish. And I don't remember a lot about it, but 
it was so controversial. My parents confiscated it from me and I wish I could find another copy of it, but. <laughs> it was the hash eater there. I think that was something, something like the name of it, right? Is that the, or is it how to make be. hash? Yeah. Yeah. It was a, <clears throat> a long time ago, actually. But, okay. Yeah. What about you, Martin? You got any weed books? <clears throat> Sorry, just packing the bottle there. <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, we specific books. I suppose the first book I ever had was uh, the the Grow Bible by Ar- Argus Went. Is uh, that was the first one I ever got my hands on. Um, outside of that, uh, I suppose weed specific book. Uh, there, there was the book of buds. If we get those, there was a couple of different volumes as well. Mm, and there was, I don't know uh, that one. Yeah, and there, there was like a, a, a spliff uh, book as well. There was like a book of spliffs, all the different spliffs. and how Yeah, different spliffs you can roll. Yeah, there was issue one and issue two of that. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, there was two of those. So, uh, yeah, we had my, hand, had my hands in those for a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, what, what, uh, the, the best grow books, though, I would probably recommend right now, though, for people, but they're probably not for beginners. Um and that's the, the team and with series by uh mm-hmm. Jeff Monfels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Jeff Monfels book the team of microbes, team of nutrients, team with fungi, and there's a fourth one, right? He he had Someone in the chat yeah. just said there's a new he's just released. He's just come out with uh bacteria. Yeah, team with bacteria, right. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So team with microbes kind of cur- covers that, but I, I don't know he's probably gone into it that deeper in that because I would have thought those three books together were uh Quite oh, yeah. Each, uh, quite in depth. Yeah, there you go. Uh, nice. I wanted to, I lent my third one out to uh, my friend, but uh, yeah, these are the required. You shouldn't lend books. Books. Yeah. books are not for lending, man. You you give people a book. <laughs> it's like it's back. like a rule. It's like an unwritten rule of books, right? I'm not these else books, man. You need these books. You want to come back because um, yeah, there's so much right. knowledge in there. You just I'm going to text her this week about it because I want it back. You're like, where's my shit? <laughs> uh, you're right. I have lost many books like that. Just, yeah, this uh, is what you're not supposed to do, man. He's like, here's a book. Enjoy. Don't let books. It's bad etiquette, apparently. But uh, Fuck. a, a couple of people we've mentioned there. Uh, Monkey, what, what um, what books have you got? Do you do books? Uh, not weed books at all. Uh, no way. I, my garden knowledge came from uh, various organic gardening books and whatnot back in the day. So, I mean, I basically, it was just principles of growing that got me where I am now, plus the internet, but I've never purchased a weed specific grow book. No, I've never purchased one. I've just been lucky enough to get them for free from all these epic people, which you've had on the show in the past. No, I don't usually have people uh, handing me books or anything like that, but I did win one at Percy's and deferred, decided to give it to somebody who would probably put it to better use than myself. Mm. But, uh, that's it. I would agree with you there, Monkey, though. Like, the Canvas books, um, no, Jorge does a really good job. Ed does a pretty good job, too. Um, Greg Green's Cannabis Grow Bible is, is well-written, but um, just a regular gardening book is is a really good place to start to get your mm-hmm. fundamentals down. Um, stuff that's kind of a specific, like drying and harvesting, looking at trichomes, like, you know, um, the, the really specific stuff yeah you might want a kind of a specific thing but yeah starting out like i have this book right here the compost gardening guide it's you know what we give out to our students at the compost coach uh course that we teach and it's like if you want compost this is the shit right I'm but it's cool. lame bro it's got no weed in it you know <laughs> well, i know but you know the science, if you're into the science of it, it's super cool. This is one of the exactly. things that Ed said yes. before when he was on the show. He was like, you know, I didn't really want to write a weed book, but nobody wants to buy a book about growing tomatoes. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I mean, if you if you know how to grow tomatoes well, you'll probably do well growing cannabis. Mm. That's right. So, yeah, man, I mean, there's so many fucking books out there, aren't there? There's a shitload, but there's some that stand out that, like everybody has. Like the Jorge Cervantes uh, Cannabis Encyclopedia done with the purple cover. That's a fucking epic book, man. Seen right here, man. This is, there it is. That's the one. I pre-ordered this before it came out. And if you go on Amazon, you can actually see my comment and Jorge replied to it. So nice. <laughs> I didn't realize until like five years later when I went and looked. But <laughs> this book, I always say like, you know, I'm a good grower, but lots, you know, my, my specific techniques and honing everything in came from this. So this, this is definitely one which we recommend for everybody to go out and buy for a start. This is the number one book we're going to recommend so far is the Cannabis Encyclopedia from Jorge Cervantes. That has fucking everything in it that you need to know as a home grower. 
obviously you can go into more detail, but that's with everything. You can go into more and more detail, but this is like everything you need to know on a basic level. And not, not just basic either. It's like intermediate level too. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, no, it, it's, it'll, if that's the only book you buy, you are set. Mm -hmm. I would say mm -hmm. yeah, it's got mm -hmm. everything you need. And it's a beautiful book, man. It's so well made, so well presented and it, good pictures. Just, yeah. Demos like, it tells you how to set up a grow, everything from a small grow to a huge outdoor thing. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's well written. I, I remember think. Jorge from when when he uh, made some cassette tapes. That's how long ago it was. Some of the guys out oh. there might not even know what a cassette is. <laughs> you, know, you get VHS. your VHS, man. You put that shit in the VHS player. And he was wearing a black beret with dreads and sunglasses and shit. Jorge Cervantes, that was some good shit, man um way back in the day if you like as a cannabis grower sometimes you get really interested in stuff and if you wanted to start breeding cannabis this is what you needed here robert clark uh marijuana botany and he keeps fading out yeah yeah we can see it yeah, yeah that's so robert botany. clark yeah marijuana botany okay yeah um cool. i haven't seen that you well, you've about. mentioned this book before as well i know but you think highly of this book Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it's been out what since nineteen seventy. I don't remember when it first came out. This is a oh no, nineteen eighty one, and yeah, I mean, most if not all breeders, I would say, would have this somewhere in the library because it's it's got everything you need to know about crossing different uh, different strains from different areas of the world, how to how to do everything and what to look for and how to breed cannabis, basically. Nice. Nice. yeah well chilbert just brought up a good one in the chat there that gets overlooked you know because it's not necessarily oh. a growing book but it's uh about mm. cannabis prohibition which is the emperor wear knows wears no clothes and that's from yes. the legendary jack Herra. but I, I was looking online man i was trying to buy a fucking signed copy of that but i couldn't get hold of one but i'm definitely in the, in the market for a signed copy of that i want that that'd be an epic the book are they pretty hard to find like, I don't know, are they still in print or yeah but you, you, you want first edition website. print don't you when you when you when you want it for a collection you just don't want the book you want the first edition print you don't just want to go for any standard shit oh i don't know i would just want to read i'm a fussy it. bastard mate that's why that's why i, I know you can read the yeah. ebook i think yeah they have it published online i think mm -hmm. for free i'm not too sure though caught me yeah but you know you should try and support the, the authors yeah. of anyway, these books that's a well. good book yeah good good one I'll read. yeah what, what other ones would we recommend? Of course, with this, um, the, the, the newest one from Ed Rosenthal is really good as well. What's that one called? Uh, the Cannabis Growers Handbook. I think you mentioned it, Marge. Yeah. yeah is it I the newest one you have? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What'd yeah, you think of it? Good. It's good. The thing's yeah, like a textbook, it's, right? It is like a textbook. Yeah. It has pretty much everything in it that you could possibly want for growing, for sure. Mm -hmm. I've referenced it numerous times when I've been doing my thing. So, yeah, it's definitely like a textbook. Yeah, he said that's what he wanted from it when he was making yeah. it and a lot of people, because we've had him on the show and he spoke specifically about this book before it was even released. He was talking about how it's going to be in the end of what he wanted to want, wanted of it and he wanted it to be like a textbook that could go out to all these different universities that are teaching people how to grow cannabis and shit. And he did a good job of it, man. I mean, I've never actually sat down and read through a whole one of these books because this is one of the problems being in the UK. You know, when you go out to read somewhere, say you get the train, you're going somewhere on the train, you can't really sit there reading <laughs> the <laughs> cannabis no. growers handbook. <laughs> you know? But not to scare anybody off, like it is like a textbook, but it's also, I would say more like a reference guide. Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. I don't know if you would sit down and read a book like this from cover to cover, but you know, having it on your shelf and being able to reference it when you need it for something yeah. is it's pretty invaluable. Mm -hmm. so. Especially with the deficiencies and all of that mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's one of that's one of the good ones, man. I also got a couple more. Uh, what's that one? Beyond Buds from Ed Rosenthal as well. Have you seen that one? That one's about edibles and oils and shit. Oh, I've no, seen I that one. I've never read it, but I've seen. It. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. That one's pretty cool. The missus has read that one. She liked that book. But uh, what else is the man? What other what other books are there? I mean, they're, they're um, definitely the, the two highly recommended ones. Is the Jorge Cervantes Cannabis Encyclopedia, the Ed Rosenthal Cannabis Growers Handbook, the Grow, uh, Teaming With series from Jeff Lowenfalls. That's going to teach you a shitload of gardening in general, never mind like just cannabis. It teaches yeah. you a shitload about how soil works. 
and that's definitely one you want to get into so you know the most important stuff about that then i really like this sorry. what you got there this teacher? Is a magazine called grow uh yeah the hemp and cannabis horticulture magazine Grow mm -hmm. magazine. um i don't know if you guys ever subscribed to magazines back in the day but back I used in to the day better. I mean, yes. when we had yeah. trees. <laughs> yeah, I really like magazines. I like getting mm -hmm. one in the mail and unwrapping it from the plastic. And, and, and the smell of the, the, the fresh yeah, ink. Yeah, all the of prints. that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ads and everything about magazines I love. And this magazine I really enjoy. Rob Clark, the aforementioned uh, author of the Marijuana Botany. Mm -hmm. He guests a lot as a guest author for articles in this magazine, as well as Tom McCormick, um, other large names in the industry. And it's yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It has like strange showcases, you know, just of like contemporary stuff and um stories about the old days and stuff about terpenes and what have you. So it's it's a pretty good magazine, you know. And we have something similar here in the UK, but it's more like a newspaper. It's called Soft Secrets. And you can go into most yeah. grow shops, like at hydro stores, and ask them if they have soft secrets. It'll be behind the counter because they can't advertise anything cannabis. So if you, if you go in there and ask them, then they probably do have soft secrets magazines. And that will teach you shit so you, if you don't have the money to go out and buy one of these books, because they can be pretty expensive nowadays, especially shipping. God damn. But, you know, you can get these papers for free if you go to the right places and ask for that. And you'll be able to learn things from there, too. Yeah. So that's pretty that's a pretty good way to go about things. You know, you save yourself some dough if you need to. I remember when Ed Rosenthal sent me, um, was it? I don't think it was this book. It was these, these one before this one. And uh, it, the, the shipping was more than the book was. It was like 60, 70 quid for the, for the shipping. Oh, the children just put a fucking great one in chat there. Cannabis is Medicine by uh -huh. Dr. Bonnie Goldstein. And that's something which we discussed with her on one of the interviews before as well. And it's like, when you buy that book, you buy two copies of that book. You buy one for yourself to read. And then there's one for you to hand into your healthcare professional, like your doctor or your nurse or somebody like that. So they can learn from it as well. That's a good way to go about things. So buy both, buy two of them if you can. They're not very expensive, but definitely a book worth having. What else do we have? What other books do we recommend here? There's, there's so many good authors out there when it comes to cannabis. I mean, the, the two top guys is Ed, Ed Rosenthal and the Four Heights of Fontes, for sure. They're As in, well known. Um, yeah, you're right. Those guys have, uh, I'd say, the highest volume. I like Dr. Ethan Russo. He doesn't, like, he's probably contributed or written a book. I don't know the name of it, if he has. But mm -hmm. he writes, like, he's he's more of a scientific paper guy. Right. And I really enjoy his, uh, his work, so... It's like yeah. more in depth when you go for the scientific paper kind of shit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but his is like he he writes in a very easy to read kind of, especially his historical stuff about you know origins of cannabis and mm -hmm. uh, the way it traveled around the Silk Road area back in the old days and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, John McPartland is another good name to look up if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but uh, those two are are very good. See, so many books, man. But they're, they're nice to have, you know, especially if you're in a legal place where you're allowed to have these books. That makes a difference as well, because if you are not in a legal place, so you're in the UK, you, you've got this bookshelf full of cannabis fucking books and you get visitors come around your house. You can't really have them on display, you know, which is a shame. <laughs> they're nice books, man. They're nice books. But I definitely recommend the Jorge Cervantes Cannabis Encyclopedia, the Ed Rosenthal uh, Cannabis Growers Handbook. Uh, the yeah. one you said, TG, about the breeding as well, marijuana botany from Dr. Clark, yeah? Uh, I don't think he's not a doctor, but yeah. Right. Uh, Robert Clark. Robert, Robert Clark. Ronald Clark. Cool. With an E. And then the team in with series. That's highly yeah. recommended too. And then uh, and then the Dr. Bonnie Goldstein book as well. It's, it's like There's so many out there. Like, you have to go and read these books or at least try to read them. Some of them are a bit big, but... You know, some of them are good for reference, like Marge says, you know, the Encyclopedia and the Cannabis Handbook. That, that's good for reference. But mm -hmm. the Jeff Lowenfile series, that's good to read if you want to know about how yeah. all soil works and shit like that. Then they're, they're a good section of books to read through. And then um, the political books, like the Emperor Has No The Emperor Wears No Clothes on Jack Herra. That's also a good book you can read as well. 
And there's there's so many books out there, man. It's it, it's a uh, it, I mean I would say endless, but of course it's nothing's really endless. But there's so many fucking books to read out there. But if you want to read some cannabis books, then you, you spoke for choice already. There's a lot for you to choose from. But, yeah. And of course the the websites as well. There's lots of good websites out there. They're not necessarily books, but they still have a shitload of good information on them. Especially like forums like, like PersusGroom.com. That's our forum. And just the diaries on there, the threads on there, there's proper articles that have been written on there as well. So there's still a lot for you to find online for absolutely free. You can just visit for free. You don't have to pay anything. You can learn as much as you can from there. And then you can get the newspapers and magazines. If you go to a grow shop, they probably have newspapers and magazines about growing cannabis, which you can get for absolutely free as well. You just ask them, scoop them up and you know read what you can and you learn more from those as well you learn more about you know different events that are going on different bits of culture it's not just a set informational book about you know how to grow specifically yeah uh, book, book i used to love actually was uh saw secrets remember that one yeah yeah i did mention that one soft secrets yeah i've written a few times for soft secrets they've got a few articles of mine in, in their magazines yeah she's pretty cool in there before as well it's pretty cool but uh what, what else is that <laughs> What else can we say about books? You got any Read. interesting books to recommend there, Martin? Uh, no, not after that, man. Uh, my favorite book was always just that. Uh, I suppose the easiest uh, one was that Horace went as Grow Bible. Mm. I thought that was like so complete and it was so simple as well. It explained mm -hmm. things quite well for a first timer. Um, but yeah, all the other recommendations that came in there uh, are great as well. And there's so many new books coming out as well. I got a. Um, uh, Dr. Danny Gordon's uh, Danny Gordon, yeah, I think that's her name. Anyway, again, um, mm -hmm. been a while since I had her out, but uh, she yeah, had she's been CD she's on the show in a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, excellent. Yeah, she, she I, I met her over in um over in Malta. She she gave a presentation, spoke really well. She talked about what she was doing in the UK, but uh, she was a Canadian uh, doctor working over there and uh, moved to the UK and started working there. Um, but yeah, no, um, her book was really good, really complete as well. Um, but again, that's more about on the medical side and less on the growing side. Yeah, man. That's it. Like you say, there's so many options out there, man. So much choice. Sport for choice, really. We're very lucky nowadays because back in the day, you couldn't get any of this shit. Well, and again, the lack of internet mm -hmm. was a big, you know, you didn't have a grow shop in your town. Mm -hmm. What do you do? don't have books about growing basically it's crazy and it when you think back to them days when everything wasn't just available to us where we couldn't just go yeah. online and order anything we want yeah you know have it into your door in like two days or less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two days you'd be pissed off like where's my shit <laughs> <laughs> that's right i'd be standing at the door after like two hours like where is it <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy isn't it yeah we're so lucky man we're so lucky but I, at the same time, we're not lucky. It was kind of cool back then in the 90s, you know, <laughs> the, the 80s and 90s where we didn't just have everything available to us. We, I think, I feel like we appreciated things more, but maybe that's just because I was a kid back then. Yeah, you used to have to go to this place called the mall to get stuff. And, you know, and the library. Imagine going into the library. Oh, gosh. Oh, what yeah. book did I see? Um, I went into Waterstones, which is a big uh, book shop big bookstore here in the uk you know there's loads of stores water zone stores all over the uk and i went in there looking at the gardening books and i seen in there uh helen ellen holland's book what's it called uh what's it called man um, cannabis a guide to weed what was the book called can you remember she'd been on the show i don't remember the name weed the a connoisseur's to guide to cannabis or something like there that. You go. Something like that yeah so and that book was there on the shelf man just nice. like you could have just bought it in the shop there in the UK. It's like, yeah, that's pretty fucking sweet. You know, and that's a well presented book as well. That's very nice. And then there's a book uh, from Lizzie Post. Remember Lizzie Post when we had Lizzie on the oh, show? Oh, um, yeah, it was yeah. Cannabis Etiquette. Yeah, Cannabis Etiquette. Uh, you know, how to be uh, a, a polite stoner and shit. Pass it to the left. Yeah. Well, and she covered not only that, but other things. You know, it was, it was pretty cool. She mm. was a real cool chick, really, really fun to talk to. Yeah, man. That reminds me of David Bedenstock's book, How to Smoke Pot Properly, which I bought. He's been on my show, but I think he was oh, on yeah, yeah, yeah. your show yeah, too, right? Been, yeah, he's been on High, high and Hungry. The Highbrow too. Guide to Consuming Cannabis or something like that. Huh? I think it was How to Smoke Pot Properly. Okay. Yeah. 
There's so many books out there, man. So many books. Yeah. It was a fun book to read, too. Yeah, man. So let us know in the comments, everybody, if you have books that you have that you'd like to recommend to anybody. You know, put a name in the in the comments of this video so we can find out and you know spread the word so we can all know William what the good ones are. Walter the Wizard in there as well. Yeah, Walter the Wizard and and wow, oh, man, what the fuck is the name of that full book? Walter the Wizard and the Magic Seed, isn't it? That's, that's the what Magic it is. Seed. Yeah. yeah, I have a copy of that too because we've had uh, I can't even remember the name of the author, but she was on the show. Can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, we had an interview with her too. So we've had a lot of authors on the show in the past. So it's very cool to speak to these people who have patience to write a book. Right. <laughs> that fucking yeah. takes ages, man. It's a big project. And I've never actually. heard never heard anything positive about the process of writing a book either. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> and apparently people don't even make a lot of money off it. It's not it's not like people make yeah. a shitload of dough. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a bestseller, I made 30 quid. <laughs> There's nothing to right. it, really. you got to really enjoy that whole process. Yeah, I think to be really successful at writing, you have to almost be, like, prolific, like Stephen King or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe not even that, man. I don't even think he's making money nowadays. No? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Fucking downloading books. Goddamn pirates. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hate digital books. Though, Goddamn I will say. internet ruined books. <laughs> <laughs> What y'all reading for now, right? You know, what you reading for? Hey, mister, come here. <laughs> I love that scene. Did you look up Bill Hicks, Monkey? Random I did, yes. I had seen some of him uh, a little bit a while back. So when I saw his face, I'm going like, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Everybody knows Bill Hicks, man. Yeah. yeah. That guy's a showed, showed him to a, a friend or two of mine, and they go like, oh, yeah, I remember that dude. But he kind of like, he, he, he blipped into our li life so quickly. We, Mm -hmm. really a, a non-event yeah it wasn't around for very long was it unfortunately they got to him oh yeah just the way it goes anyway random tangent over there yeah there you go <laughs> so we do have well, some I mean, questions if, as well sorry if you're it. interested in random cannabis uh like history uh steve d'angelo has like the cannabis manifesto out and right cool it brings steve. you through the uh you know why are we here today how do we get here kind of kind of thing mm-hmm mm -hmm. Steve D'Angelo is a good guy as well. You know, just just buy the book just to support Steve D'Angelo and his cause, man, because he's doing good things out there. He's a good guy. I like Steve D'Angelo. But we mm -hmm. also have some questions that we'll move on to because we have quite a few questions today. Some are serious ones, some not so serious ones. But we'll begin <laughs> with this one from Thornley Bowles. Question number one, Nightmare Before Christmas. Is it a Halloween or Christmas movie? What do we think? I think it's both. Yes, is my answer. Yes. Good yes. answer. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, from Marge. What are you Agreed. saying, TG? Mm, I never liked that movie. What? What? <laughs> yeah, no, it's what all the, you know, fucking everybody's got their stupid jack skeleton fucking bags and shit. Like, not into that. No. Don't do it. Uh, I do like the songs, but um, I, ultimately, I would say it's probably a Halloween movie more than a Christmas movie, but. Don't take my word for it. I thought it was a Halloween movie for people who kind of lost people at Christmas or something like. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people enjoy Halloween like it was Christmas. I mean, people have Halloween trees and shit nowadays. You've seen that? What? Yeah, decorate Halloween. a tree for Halloween. Decorate a tree. Really? Like, yeah, for Halloween. Strange, why? Right, strange. I don't know why. Bro. Toilet paper or what? Like, <laughs> like spider webs and Halloween <laughs> things? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. I you meant, guts like, guts and vomit on your tree yeah and hang like dead <laughs> shit and that was the way it. jeffrey dahmer did it but yes <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a christmas movie it was released on the 16th of december christmas movie. is that the criteria for a christmas movie then is it martin is then it die it? hard is yeah. not a christmas uh -huh. movie well if it was a halloween movie it was released a hell of a lot early yeah, <laughs> or just late. <laughs> yeah, it takes a long time to make them. them oh, kind of if, it was, if it was bored, he definitely would have released it just before Halloween, like and hit Halloween and Christmas. But it was like December sixteenth. I was hitting that Christmas audience. I, that was like a stocking filler for that Christmas. So, <laughs> what was the consensus here? Then were we saying yes? I think it was yes. So yeah, the question was: Nightmare Before Christmas is a is it a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Yes. Is the answer to that, oh, yeah. Phil. Right, so <laughs> question number two. If I give out candy canes on Halloween, will that make them officially Halloween candy or are they still Christmas candy? 
You know, that would Wait be a pretty minute. fun to do, actually. <laughs> the question is, <laughs> when, did you buy, when did you buy them? Last Christmas? <laughs> right. Actually, you could probably buy them now because everywhere I go, I see Christmas shit out right oh, now. Oh, God. Good Don't idea. get me started again, Marge. I did a rant <laughs> a couple of episodes about this shit. <laughs> I yeah, thought he just no, had leftover stuff from last Christmas he wants to get rid of. So, hey, give them to the kids this year. Yeah, yeah. It, sure. It's 90% preservatives anyway. It'll be fine. There's it no date on them, so what the heck, really you know? Taste. <laughs> I feel like, though, if I got, if I got candy canes in my, Chris, in my, in my bag <laughs> in Halloween, like, looking back, back in the day, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're not the best these? candy either. You know, they're just a mint stick. So, yeah, exactly. I, I like them, man. I like them. It's well, one of the few things, things to like. You can't eat that many, though. You're not like fucking shoving your face full of candy canes like yeah, you are you with can't Mars bars. Right? Candy canes. No, oh my no. God. It's Christmas. I can't wait to have candy canes <laughs> back in the store. No, yeah. I know. No one says that. No, nobody no. does. Egg I've never no. seen anybody <laughs> filling up their, their buggy in a store <laughs> full of candy canes running to the right. cashier. Never. <laughs> and then to finish this off here from Phil, he says, I just like listening to you guys debate what is or what's not a Christmas movie. P.S. I don't think Die Hard movie or Gremlins movie are Christmas movies. Now, mate, no, Phil. I'll discuss this briefly on the forum. You're not going to make any <laughs> friends talking like that, Phil. No, That's man. Crazy no, no. Talk. <laughs> I mean, we, I got, we got ammunition for the Die Hard answer that when we found out that it was released in July. Yeah, that so kind of fucked me that up. That kind of missed yeah, your right. argument right. way yeah, up, was, man. You know, I've never even considered that as criteria, but I'm glad Martin brought that up because... Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I mean, not that the industry knows best, but that's obvious. They, they're pretty fucking smart. You know? But then again, it's like people do celebrate Christmas in July nowadays. It's fucking crazy, man. No, you know, the decorations come out. Born, right? Allegedly, yeah, allegedly. Christmas yeah. in July sales in, in the U.S., you know, all, of, all the time. But yeah, yeah, I still think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, which is definitely up for debate. And, you know, we, that <laughs> debate will never be over. But when it comes to Gremlins, bro, Gremlins, Gremlins is a Christmas movie, man. It, there's no, it's absolutely, the, the, the actual thing, the Mogwai, Gizmo, was a Christmas present, bro. He was, he was Christmas shopping. It started Christmas for sure. Shopping. For sure, man. I always say Christmas movie has to, like, you know, somehow it show snow in the it. spirit of Christmas. Does, it I don't remember. <laughs> does it Gremlins? Uh, uh, or do they just, like... <laughs> and then that no. chick tells that, that dark-ass fucking Christmas story in it. Remember, the, and she's sitting there, and she's got that glazed look up on her face, and she starts telling the story about how her dad went missing for... Uh, it, it was Christmas oh, yeah, Eve. Her dad chimney. went missing. Yeah, the chimney story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then there was a funny smell coming from the chimney. So they got somebody out to come look at it a few days after Christmas because they thought it was a dead pigeon or something. But it wasn't. It was her dad dressed up as Santa who tried to get down the chimney. It's like, God damn, that's a bit dark. That is. You know, for, is it a kid's movie? I'd say well, it's a kid's movie. Isn't it? It's PG-13. About the, original, the original Gremlins? Yeah, the like, original Gremlins. Movie, right? like, it's like 20 years old. Oh, no, so like 40 years old. I she came out in the fucking 80s Fuck, or something. It? Yeah, it's, so, it's another Google or Bull one. Google or Bull. Yeah, you're it, probably right, but it's, it's, uh, it's like I still think of the 90s as being like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so when was Gremlins released? That's definitely not the case. God damn. Yeah, don't remind me. Don't remind the me. The 7th of December. 1984. So it's oh, 38 so years wow. old this year. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Uh, I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> no. But that was only 10 years ago. Right. 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 Cool. Cool. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Right. It? I'm glad we can all agree on that. Right. We yeah. all agree that it was true. <laughs> so we have another question here from Fumi Bowles, which is more cannabis related. He said, uh, which would you rather prefer, pumpkin spice or pumpkin pie? Pumpkin spice, uh, pumpkin pie. Yeah, I, I haven't never had either of those, so I can't well, answer that. You mean like a pumpkin spice, like you'd buy from like Starbucks or whatever? Yeah, like a pumpkin spice latte. Or... Yeah, yeah, pie all the way. If I'm going drink versus dessert, for sure. Well, it's if you're eating the pie, the pie's got the spice in it already, so you oh, get all yeah, of it. So there you go. That's where I'm at. I do think I personally prefer a pie. 
Highly. <laughs> yeah, and actually, my, my stoner brain there, because I hit that mic quite a few times. That was Sparky's question. Filmy Bowls had a different question. I kind of like skipped the line there. But yeah, nobody wants no pumpkin shit, Sparky. If you're not carving it, it's no good, bro. Nobody wants no pumpkin. That's why people carve it, because nobody wants to eat it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Filmy Bowls. Is good stuff, man. Is it? Oh, it is. I I've never I had it. Pumpkin so. pie. It's like You've never had pumpkin my pie? pie. No, no, I've never had pumpkin. Have you had sweet what? potato pie? What? Uh, I don't think I've had sweet potato pie. Because it's very oh. similar to that, but uh, Actually, yeah. you got to try pumpkin pie. You did, how, an, an infused pumpkin pie. <laughs> even better. Yeah. And shellfish. Yeah. No, bro. <laughs> it's not with a nice in the UK. Big, yeah, you could have mm. a nice big prawn dinner and, and top it off with a pumpkin pie at the end. Yeah. Mm. That would make the shellfish more palatable. So there you go. I love pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh, I might be able to buy one this week. Oh, I, I'm going to have to go it. and check it out, see if we can find some. And I'll Somebody have to on try it. It's going to be expensive, and I don't give a shit. But, you know, the smell of pumpkin, it just it doesn't smell delicious, man. It doesn't smell delicious. It's different once it's cooked. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose so. Completely. Right. And you add, like, a fuck ton of sugar and paste. And pumpkin spice. And pumpkin spice, yeah. But we, we do have a cannabis-related question here from Phil. Which uh, he says, what part of the joint is the best? First hit or near the end? Which one do you prefer? What are you saying, Monkey? <laughs> well, <laughs> if I'm growing my own, I want the first hit off of it. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day when I was probably would have taken one of the later hits because it was stronger. Back when the weed wasn't mm -hmm. quite as strong, you got more resin in the back end. Yeah. So nowadays, I want the first hit. So you said there, Martin, you said the first hit. First, yeah, yeah, first. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's always the tastiest. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. What about you, Marge? What are you having? I probably have to say the first hit, too, because I often don't make it to the end because I also hardly ever smoke joints. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. What about you, TG? Uh, well, if you smoke the weed that I smoke, it doesn't matter where it is because it all tastes fucking good. <laughs> you got that oil line just, like, moving its way back down the joint dripping on your fucking fingers just like oozing out of that shit like <laughs> uh but uh i don't know i mean yeah, yeah so i don't smoke is, joints anymore it's nice i guess because it's Aren't fresh twist, twisted brings up a good point there uh, like when i said first uh, like how many people out there actually inhale that like when you actually spark up or like do you get a light and and then actually take a hit because like what, what he's saying there is right like the first hit is always like a bit of a paper hit you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. bite that top sure, off. Yeah, it's not really lit it. properly yeah it's not burning properly yeah 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 i, I find uh some i always kind of had a habit of thinking you know when you're burning that top but you don't really want to be inhaling the gas and the lighter as well mm -hmm. so you just yeah, yeah. light and you don't really inhale that first but you do a bill clinton on it and then you take a proper hit in the second <laughs> you do a bill clinton on it <laughs> yeah you don't inhale <laughs> I mean, not to sound like an elitist or something, but good weed should last to the end mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in terms of That's taste. one of the uh, the criteria which Danny Danko checks when he's doing the judging for the cannabis cups to see sure. if, the, if the spliff tastes the same at the start and the, and the finish. We, when we talked to Swami, he said the same thing. One of the mm -hmm. criteria they use in the Emerald Cup is how does it taste now a little bit here, here, mm -hmm. all the way through, mm -hmm. right? And does it retain its taste all the way through? Or does mm -hmm. it just taste like burning by the end of it or whatever so yeah there you go everybody well there you go so, uh but is that more on how it's rolled though rather than the, the actual weed in itself like? um, my son showed me a picture on his phone but he showed Maybe. his mother a picture on his phone and then was like go and show your dad that and so he's come and showed me his phone and there was three joints in the glasses case you know the case put glasses in like the spectacles then kind of hard cases and his friend had sent him a picture and she had got these three joints for 60 fucking pound and that they were like rolled so bad oh no it's like it, it brought a tear to my eye to know that these these well i don't think my boy's going to be involved in that but you know his friend is going to be smoking those fucking things and this could possibly be one of their first experiences of cannabis and they have to fucking because remember them days when you're first learning and you had to learn how to roll and shit and it was dire. It Look was at this dire. roll. You got to legal dire. That's a, when, I mean, they don't all look like that, but that's a hilarious. What the actual fuck is that? <laughs> I don't want, I want <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's short 
a one surprisingly a one way a half gram like it said but yeah. uh, i think they put some like lead paint or something in it <laughs> you know for the uh, extra dense hit it's so small you know if you got facial hair you, you're burning it off lighting up that joint <laughs> oh man look i can still remember back in the day trying to spark the roach yeah <laughs> you know try not to burn your lips with a lighter trying to get it lit <laughs> good Martin's times laughing. you've done it too man we've yeah all we've all been there. there we've all been there but the pre-growing <laughs> days isn't it because nowadays if you've got yeah, your own nowadays, oh, you won't get that close throw it away i oh, just yeah. roll another one next you go and we're so spoiled these days i'm just thinking of the old days you know when you're we are uh, with the green rizzlas and oh, like you, you kill somebody if they opened your packet and went in for the green little cardboard piece yeah. of the back, mm -hmm. like, you know, the roach and, card at the back, yeah, the roach the, card, the green card. Make, <laughs> but you're trying to make as many roaches off as you can. I think I used to like have a way of making almost four roaches off of that little green roach card at the back. Like. Damn. <laughs> and now we get to use pretty much one for our roaches. They're all one whole roach, in, like yeah, yeah perforated and all, like you know, <laughs> you know, perforated where the fold should be uh, to make the M in the roach. We're so lucky. Uh, an MW actually when you roll it, it's MW for Martin's World. Just so, oh, is know. that what it is? Oh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't Rock, realize Rock, that Rock, until Rock. now. You got copyright on that or something? <laughs> <laughs> Exclusivity, yeah. Exclusive. Martin's right, World paper in there. No more. If you hold it this way, it's an M. If you hold it that way, it's a W. Look at that. I'll have to fold one less time and just do an N instead of a W. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you don't get charged. That's it. Yeah, so we have another question from Woody here. Woody's got a, a proper a weird grown question, like an actual question. He said, uh, how far will male pollen travel? Speaking personally, I know I've got pretty far. I know I've gone pretty far for some tail, but how determined is this pollen stuff? Will it get drunk and make promises it's not planning on keeping just to get to those pure soft white hairs and mess them up a bit? Yes, yes, Woody. Uh, looking into chastity belts at the moment, but I'm not sure about installation. So what kind of distances are we talking here? Should I build a wall? If I put males in the basement and females upstairs behind closed doors, will that stop the coitus? Bazinga. TG, this your kind of uh, thing, man. How, how, how do you keep yeah. your, your males and females separate? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I would say the answer is good good luck um even if you're in the same house, well especially if you're in the same house with you know an internal circulation of air somehow whether it's your furnace or just air movement and stuff around the place you're probably gonna run into some cross contamination like especially um if you don't take steps like have a carbon filter with really you know a really good exhaust filtration setup to uh, filter that pollen i've um for these actually i'm picking them out right now as i speak these f2 crystalline entities i made i used two tents in the same room with two fully you know shitting out pollen everywhere males in those two tents and i did pretty good in terms of uh keeping the pollen inside um but uh there was a bit of contamination in my one tent uh because yeah like it's it's almost impossible mm -hmm. to keep it under wraps and it can travel on your clothes and shit as well right if you visit the males and the, the pollen gets yeah. on your clothes and you visit the females then it's going to jump mean, off your clothes onto the plants. yeah you probably yeah it's pretty delicate stuff but yeah mm -hmm. and in terms of how far can it travel outside um but not far because the sunlight gets to it right and the, the UV yeah, well, sunlight bites it i mean well, i don't know exactly how like how much UV and sunlight will degrade pollen to the point where it's not effective anymore. But I do know I got pollinated like a bitch in my backyard and mm -hmm. there's not a, a hemp farm that and they're at least three, four kilometers away from me. Yeah. I've heard stories about uh, plants in Spain and that having pollen travel over to Gibraltar and pollinating plants over there. So, and that's traveling like over a small ocean. A small yeah, piece of the that's ocean depending on the conditions like mm -hmm. uh, where, where yeah. the plants are what, what the wind is like and mm -hmm. yeah. how heavy the air pollen or how heavy the pollen is that they're dropping at, at yeah, a time yeah. when you know, is the wind blowing at that time what's the humidity because oh, yeah. humidity yeah. will kill the pollen and yeah you got to watch everything yeah. yeah it's so light it can travel on your imagination alone 
I agree. <laughs> that. It would be like <laughs> it almost you know. can, man, because you know if you've ever tried to do a small like a one bud pollination, when you when you tap that Q tip on that on that mm -hmm. bud, you can see the grains just float. So exactly, it's like only want to get the one. That's just to go in a different, you know, like what I usually do now is I'll take my male and my female that I'm working on out to my garage, mm -hmm. and then you know wait for the mail to kind of open up out there and then do my thing there so it's like mm -hmm. you know, isolated yeah um, but um no but you just want to do like a, a, a small scale pollination like maybe just one bud for a few seeds and let everything else just go, go pretty much seedless is what i'm yeah. referring to but even when you're doing that like i said you can see the grains of pollen just so gently float and right up straight around the plant it just moves so easily yeah it's not i mean you know i didn't get that many seeds considering what i did right just fucking try and walk out the put a paper bag over the mail and i tried to walk it out of the room as fast as i could obviously mm -hmm. all my other intake fans were off and shit like you know i took steps mm -hmm. covered up every hole that was available sucked all the air out for a bit sacrificing my tents for a bit to no exhaust and everything but yeah pretty much if you you've know. got male plants and female plants at the same time expect some pollination and then if you don't get any, then, you know, it's a pleasant surprise, but you are probably going to get some, even if it's just a few seeds, you'll get some pollination. At some yeah. Point. But it's not so bad. You know, some of the best cultivars have come out of accidents. So. Mm -hmm. so a quick question here from Improper Weed Viking. How long on average does it take for a flowering plant to re-veg? Ooh, depends. <laughs> My experience, I would say you know three to five weeks three of the very most when you start seeing well i would say probably after two two weeks after it gets settled after you planted your clone and it's like holy fuck where am i for a week mm -hmm. you have your next <laughs> week where it starts to like okay now i'm here a week after you might get some new growth but really fucked up looking growth some really spirally leaves maybe some one bladers some three bladers and mm -hmm. that's all it's going to grow for a bit and then after mm -hmm. probably four to five weeks i'll say in my experience, then you'll start seeing uh, relatively normal growth again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's when I take a, a clone yeah. um, that's into flowering. Revegging a plant itself, I've never actually done that. Um, and I don't know how long that would actually take. If any of you guys, I don't know. I think, uh, recently yeah. just did it, unfortunately. Okay, cool. I, I was trying not to do it. Uh, <laughs> but I had the plant outside just because yeah. I had no tent space. And time of year it flipped so by the time i got it in in mid august it had already started in flower you could already see buds were, were starting to form and were starting to stretch so i put it in a tent and it took a full six weeks to completely stop flowering and start producing standard three to five uh finger leaves that and actually give me some new growth we're like like tg said pretty much for four to five weeks I got almost no growth out of it. It just sat there mm -hmm. like it was dormant. And then all of a sudden, one day, it decided to turn everything back on. And yeah. boom, there you go. Expect six yeah. weeks, man. Six weeks will be cold. Did you have you done this before, March? No, no, I never have. Yeah, it's yeah. easy. And I only speak from uh, taking a clone three weeks into flower mm. perspective. Yeah. So yeah, this was a plant. Way. I mean, this was a a, a good. 18 inch tall plant out above the pot, you know, pretty good size in flower when I, when I put it in there. Good news is she did flip and it's now went back flipped into flower. Our bad news is it stretched so much. My intent, the flower is into light right now. So it'll be trim time tomorrow. Uh, also from a uh, weed Viking as well. He said also in the flowery, if the flowering bud matures on the plant prior to re -veg, can I help myself to that tasty morsel? and not harm the plant if you're chopping something off the plant you're harming it it just depends on yeah. how much you're harming it you know and if that is that the only bud is it like one big single cola as long as you've got a couple of leaves you know a little bit of bush left on the plant you'll be able to re-veg it as long as it can pick up some light don't harvest everything some people even harvest like all the buds off and then re-veg it with just the leaf matter from the bottom part of the plant but it takes a long time for it to re-veg Right. Everybody agree with that? You can just take the put off. Yeah, that's what I've done mm -hmm. in the past. If you got See, anything worth, worth keeping, yeah, just chop it off. If it's not worth keeping, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything like that before, Martin? No, can't say I have, not to be honest. 
Mm. It just takes a bit too long, doesn't it? It's best to just start some seeds, or like TG says, take a cutting earlier on in the flowering period. About week. Yeah, to week. I mean, you're halfway through what an auto flower could do before it's actually revegged enough to flip to go back into flower. So mm. it, it's a slow process. You have to want to save those genetics if you're doing it. Yeah. And then we have one more question, and this one's from Firetop. And he asks, uh, what's the best way to get dense buds? Panel opinion. Uh, get good. dense buds, good light, man. Good light. Strain. Need a good That's strain. Always been said, yeah. With intensity, uh, density comes with intensity. Is what I've always heard. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's number one is get a good light. Mm -hmm. What do um, you say, TG? Well, that's a really good question, you know, because on like the socials and stuff, I get a lot of questions on like how can I fatten up my buds, especially when people want to build my super soil and use it, and then they're used to the traditional, um, you know, hydro kind of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I always use the way the term "big boob girls" on bottles, right? Mm -hmm. Because those shiny <laughs> things that sell they're expensive. They have some stuff that probably does help. Or but... twenty, there goes. Sorry to drop. <sighs> Whatever. No, sorry, you know. thank you, thank you. My yeah. my advice though would be, yeah, have yeah. have good gear, have your setup dialed in, but just keep the plant healthy the whole time. Don't don't try and like force feed it a bunch of shit at the end. If you keep your plant healthy the entire life of it, it will it will like have the ability to produce the maximum of what its genetics allow at the end mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just you know you look at old people that exercise versus old people that like were not you know just i'm not saying old people just humans i guess but look at arnie arnie's like 70 years old man and yeah he's, like he's good you know? there's people that still are tommy you know like he's mm -hmm. he's kept up his regime and he's healthy he's doing stuff right but uh, other old people that are his age are not so mobile and stuff because of reasons. Um, they they treated their bodies tougher during their lives or something happened to them, just like a plant, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you keep your plant healthy the whole time, that's the best way to get big buds. Dense buds. What about you, Marge? You got anything to add to this? Not really, honestly. I mean, somebody said in the comments that dense isn't always best either, and there's probably mm -hmm. some truth to that as well. So mm -hmm. I just try and grow healthy stuff with the constraints that I have in my current setup. Yeah. So yeah. And try but not to feed too much nitrogen. Uh, you know, if you feed too much nitrogen, it can give you airy buds. So don't feed too much of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, de that's a definite. Yeah. I don't know. I started going in this microbe direction because I was in salt and I crossed over into the synganic side of it. It gives kind of gives you the best of both worlds, some microbes and some salts in there. And I have to say, it really has increased the density on my butts, but I can't tell you exactly why. I just know that it has. Mm -hmm. So that was the last question there, how to get dense butts. So that's about everything. You know, we'd recommend you some good ass books there, everybody. You know, highly recommend those books. This, the Jorge Cervantes Cannabis Encyclopedia, the Ed Rosenthal's uh, Cannabis Growers Handbook. <coughs> The teaming with microbes, teaming with fungi, teaming with nutrients, and teaming with bacteria series from Jeff Lowenthal. So they're all epic books that you should check out. The political ones like The Emperor Wears No Clothes from Jack Herrera. The Marijuana Botany from Russ Clark, was it, TG? Robert Clark. Robert Clark. Clark. Robert Clark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so good for breeding. I'm sure into that. Lots of good suggestions there, everybody. So, you know, check out some books. It's nice to have these on the shelf just for reference. You never know when the, when the EMP is going to come, everybody. You know, it <laughs> could happen at any exactly, time. Exactly, man. So I mean, make sure you have these paper paper versions of the info. And like you said about the magazine, there's something about books. You just like, you know, you get them worn out. You always read that one page. It's mm -hmm. like, I love books. So mm -hmm. yeah, buy books. Bibliophile. I agree. Yeah, so good shit, man. Good shit. I hope everybody goes out. And if you do go out and buy a book, let us know which one in the comments and shit. Or find us over at percysgrowroom.com and let us know over there as well. I think we should start a thread about which books we have. I'm not sure if we already got one. Yeah. But we should well, definitely there, have one. Like you said, there's so many more that I'm, I know we're leaving out. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be cool to like have a big repository that you could go to and 
And, There's uh, a thread at Percy somewhere about yeah. that. I do remember reading about it. Yeah, we, we sure, hit 100k but... posts the other day on Percy, so it's hard we to did. find things now. You know, <laughs> use the is. search Sometimes. box, everybody. <laughs> search box definitely works best. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but that's the grow guides. We'll go to the outro. Let's do that. And there we go, everybody. That was this week's Grow Guides. If you want to go out and buy any of these books, you can probably find them all on Amazon, but it's always best to try and find it from, directly from the author. And if you email Jorge or Ed or Jeff Lohenfels or anybody who writes these books, they might even be able to sign the book for you and then send it out to you if you ask them. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you go check out, that out as well. But for now, that's it for this week. That's the Grow Guides. Uh, the next show is on Sunday, uh, at 9 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. You can come and join us over on youtube.com slash high on homegrown, and we'll see you there in the live chat, hopefully. But if not, of course, the cannabis news will be released on Monday, as it is every week. Thank you very much for listening to the show and downloading this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some things. I hope you're going to go out and buy some books. And it would be great, of course, as we say every week, if you can share this episode with somebody who you think might find the information useful. That would be super cool. It's the best way to help the show grow. And we massively appreciate you when you do things like that. So share on social networks, share by word of mouth. That's the best thing you can do to help the podcast grow. So yes, thank you. As usual, it's been a pleasure. We'll catch you on Sunday for the live show. But if not, we'll catch you on Monday for the Cannabis News and Events. Have a good weekend, everybody. Stay high and stay safe. We'll see you in a bit. Goodbye.